All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the second part of the video for section 3.3, continuing on with our studies of polynomials and digging even deeper into studying uh, more of their properties. Okay, so let's call talk about something called multiplicity of roots. And first of all, this is a new word we haven't seen yet in this class for roots. Well, we've talked about square roots and cubed roots, but here we mean roots in a different way. So, um, in this context, roots is another term for zeros, or what I've also been calling horizontal intercepts, right? So now we have three terms for those. So roots, zeros, horizontal intercepts, they all mean the same thing. And so we know from this function that we see right here, we actually did this one in a previous video, where we have already found that the horizontal intercepts of this function would be at one zero, negative two zero and three zero. But then when we say this term multiplicity, what we're referring to is the power on the factor that corresponds to that uh, horizontal intercept. So first of all, let me write here, multiplicity. We're gonna list out the multiplicities for each of these zeros, but let me explain what they mean. So if you look at the first one, the one, zero. That comes from this term right here, the t minus one squared. And notice that that factor there has a power of two. So we know the multiplicity of one zero is two. Next one for the negative two zero. Well, that comes from the term here, the factor of the t plus two. And notice it doesn't seem to be raised to a power, right? We just have t plus two in parentheses. But even though there's no power there, we can imagine that there's an imaginary one there, which means that the multiplicity of that negative two zero is one. And then similarly for the t minus three factor, again, no power, so we can assume it's a one. So we know the multiplicity of that uh, zero is one as well, okay? All right, so that's identifying multiplicity of roots, but your next question would be, Cody, why would we care about that? Well, let me explain to you why. So the multiplicity of a root actually tells us what happens in the graph at that point, okay? So as you can see here, we're looking at, if we have a factor of the form x minus h to the p, where p is the power, these graphics here show us what happens at different points depending on the power there. So for example, if the multiplicity of a root is one, then what happens at where it crosses the horizontal axis is that the graph is more or less just gonna cut straight through it. Okay, so it's gonna do something like that first one. If we have a multiplicity of two, where the power then is two, Notice that what happens is that at that zero, the graph kind of bounces. It comes down, hits the graph, and then bounces off. Also note that here we have one that's bouncing from the top. It could actually also bounce from the bottom, depending on the graph. And then for a multiplicity of three, notice that it does this thing where it kind of comes up to the horizontal axis, kind of flattens out, and then goes up and beyond. And just like um, the last one, even there is another way this could come in. It could also do something like this. Okay, so go in the other direction. So that's what the multiplicity tells us. And then further, if you read below, it tells us that if we have higher powers, so if we have things above one, two, or three, uh, so like four, six, eight, five, seven, nine, well, if we have four, six, and eight, so basically any even power above two, we get this uh, basically the same shape as what we have for if the power is two. So more or less, we're gonna get a bounce at that horizontal intercept. For odd powers above three, so five, seven, nine, and so on and so forth, we actually also get this same basic shape as what we have here for the multiplicity is three. But what happens is that it just gets flatter and flatter. So this little flat part here just gets flatter and flatter as the odd exponent increases. Okay. Now, if you're worried about trying to remember all these different things, okay, 
one thing that helps is to think about if we have p equals one, so the power is one. That's related to like x to the first power, which we know is just x. And if you think about our toolkit function, f of x equals x, what does the graph of that look like? Oh, right, it's just a straight line, right? Which notice is kind of what the graph here looks like if our multiplicity is one. For p equals two, we'll notice that's kind of like saying x squared, which what does, if you think about our graph of f of x equals x squared, what does that look like? Oh yeah, it's kind of this parabola shape, which looks oddly similar to what we have here, right? And then finally for p equals three, the power is three, that's like x cubed, which we know f of x cubed is our cubic function. Graph of that looks something like this, which is very similar to what we see. So the shapes or the behavior of these different um, multiplicities at particular horizontal intercepts are related to our toolkit functions. All right, let's put this into practice. And we're gonna use this knowledge to graph this function here. So t of x equals two times x minus one squared times x plus three. And as we do this, we're actually gonna combine a lot of different things we've been talking about this. Um, uh, sorry, this, uh, this chapter. So first of all, um, we're gonna identify a bunch of stuff. So we're gonna look at the degree here. Okay, we're going to find where the horizontal intercept or intercepts are along with their multiplicities. We're also going to find our vertical intercept. And that's it for right now. So let's start with the degree. What was the degree of this polynomial? Well, notice that we have a term being squared and the term with no power, which means it's to the first, which tells us that we have a degree three polynomial. Our horizontal intercepts, well, we could get those from setting this function equal to zero. So we have zero equals two times x minus one squared times x plus three. We know we could find the zeros here from setting each of these pieces equal to zero, which if we do that, I believe we get x equals one and x equals negative three. So we know our horizontal intercepts occur at the points one zero and negative three zero. And if I think about the multiplicities for the one zero, well, there's a power of two here, so that's a uh, multiplicity of two. The negative three comes from this one, which has power of one, so that's a multiplicity of one. And then we can find our vertical intercept by plugging in zero to the function, right? So we do t of zero equals two times zero minus one squared times zero plus three give us two times negative one squared times three, which will give us two times three, which is six. So we see our vertical intercept is at zero, six. All right. Great, so now we're gonna plot our points. So we have a point at one, zero, at negative three, zero, and zero, six, which is up off our grid a little bit. So right about here, if you can see that. And then to figure out the shape of this polynomial, okay, we're gonna use also the degree of the polynomial and use that to determine the long run behavior. So this is a third degree polynomial. Notice that the leading coefficient here is positive. So we know what that tells us is that as X goes to positive infinity, the outputs, in this case, the T of X's, they're also gonna to go towards positive infinity and that arrow kind of shows that. And then we also know that as x goes to negative infinity, the f t of x's will also go towards negative infinity. Okay, so that's why the other arrow is there. And now we can draw our graphs. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with my first arrow. I'm gonna go up to my first zero at negative three. Now notice negative three had a multiplicity of one. So what does that mean happens at that zero? Oh, right, it means that the graph needs to cut straight through it, so we get something like this. And we'll go up to our vertical intercept, because that seems like the next logical thing to do. Pass through that, come down to our next zero at one zero, 
But notice that has a multiplicity of two, so what's supposed to happen there? All right, that one should bounce and then continue on like that. So we get a graph that looks something, let me highlight, looks something like this here. Okay, now that's a rough sketch. If you now graph this on your calculator to double check your work, you would see it would look a little bit different than this, but more or less the same. Okay. All right, that's all for now. Thank you for watching.